I got a comment asking me to make a video on combat Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. What is it? First of all, it is a rule set of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu where you can win by submission, but it has the additional feature of being able to strike people with the open hand and you can win by technical knockout or I believe actual knockout with an open hand strike. So long as at least one person or I think Definitely if both people are on the ground, but I think as long as one person is on the ground, you can do open hand strikes. How does this change the way you practice? Well, you're not going to be able to stay in positions, especially on the bottom, where you traditionally may be safe, such as bottom half guard is going to be very, very risky to play in combat jiu-jitsu because someone could just whop you over the head, and that's not going to be very nice. Is this a good transition for people looking to go into MMA? Well, full disclaimer, I am not someone looking to transition to MMA. And I have trained with people who, who, who do, and my uneducated opinion, I guess it's better than straight up Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. If you want to transition into MMA, maybe sort of put your feet in the water, see what it's like, but if you actually want to do MMA, you should just train actual MMA at an actual MMA gym with actual MMA coaching and striking combined with grappling because you're not... Combat Jiu Jitsu is not MMA and MMA is not Combat Jiu Jitsu. That being said, Combat Jiu Jitsu is definitely not the same as regular Jiu Jitsu. And if I were to take up Combat Jiu Jitsu, stick around the end of the video and I'll let you know if that's something I'm considering doing. If I were to do it, I would have to start with training partners who I very much trusted because in my opinion the biggest reason why I don't want to do MMA is not because I'm afraid of getting hurt. I just don't like the long-term damage that can result of getting hit in the head and I do unfortunately enough things to where I may accidentally get hit in the head so I don't want to use up whatever sort of neuron capacity I have up here on purpose, especially in training, because a lot of the damage, yes, will happen in an actual MMA fight, but in the training room, if you get hit in the head over the period of years, especially if it's with training partners who are maybe not the most controlled or don't have your best interests at heart, you will accrue damage over time. And Everybody weighs that risk differently, and everybody accrues a different amount of damage, and everybody has a different amount of health. For me, I prefer to just do regular jiu-jitsu, and not MMA, for that reason. But if I were to do combat jiu-jitsu, which is different than MMA, and I were to have training partners who I trusted just to give me a light tap to let me know, hey, this is what's up, I think it would benefit my training, and I think if I ever got bored of jiu-jitsu specific techniques that I'm working on that might be a good way to spice up training to make it a little bit fresh a little bit new add some different variables in it but the biggest thing you would have to change in your training is simply one if you're not gonna have people who are willing to do combat jiu-jitsu rounds with you you have to pretend in your mind that they can or are doing combat jiu-jitsu with you so that way if you're in a position like bottom side control or bottom mount, you're not just, you know, sitting there calmly thinking, okay, this is fine, let me set up, you know, nice simple frames. You're realizing like, okay, I could be at serious risk for getting smacked upside the head and a palm fist to the to the jaw, to the face, to the head, it, you know, it could knock you out and that's some serious damage, so it's something you want to avoid if possible. So this means you're not going to let positions settle if you can help it. If you're in bottom mount, you're working your absolute best to get out as fast as you can without putting yourself in a compromising position for getting hit. If you're on top, you can imagine in your mind what you would do and how you would hit them. And if you want, now, look, you're going to have to use your own best judgment. You can't, I mean, look, if you're doing a normal jiu-jitsu round and you start, like, pretend smacking people, you know, and they actually smack you upside the head as hard as they can, it's sort of your fault, and I don't blame you. But if you communicate with them or you know their training partner, you may be able to get away with, like, throwing imaginary hits or even little hits. I and mean, honestly, most people, if you are if you can show to them that you're not trying to hurt them and what you're actually trying to do is train for this new thing called combat jiu-jitsu, you could probably get away with maybe light simulated strikes. And I think if you are going to make an argument for training for more self-defense, 
style of grappling, then obviously knowing where not to get hit is very beneficial for that. I personally don't care so much about the self-defense. Um, if you're going to really try to defend yourself, you want to learn how to use firearms. But is combat jiu-jitsu really going to help the sport go to the next level? I think not, truthfully. I think really the only thing that's going to help jiu-jitsu continue to grow and evolve is literally the superstars of the sport continuing to do events, continuing to promote themselves on social media, and just interacting with people. Really what needs to happen is a way for people to show their friends who don't know what grappling is an exciting match, and they are going to be able to watch and understand what's happening. And I think we're not quite there yet. I think both with rule set and with commentating and general awareness, but I th the the MMA scene and the UFC scene and the Joe Rogans and the Lex Friedmans and the people getting that awareness out there, it is sort of permeating the culture. There are people who've never trained before that know what jiu-jitsu is, that know the general positions, that know kind of what submissions look like because they've seen them in the UFC, because they've seen the commentators talk about what they are. And I think that is what's going to help jiu-jitsu grow. I don't, look, if combat jiu-jitsu was this thing where everybody, honestly, it's going to come down to money. If everybody in combat jiu-jitsu was making twenty to $100,000 per match, then you bet your ass it would be the thing that's getting people to go in and compete and do all this and, you know, but they're not. And if you're not going to get paid a lot of money, you're probably just going to do regular jiu-jitsu because there's not as much of a risk of injury at that point. So it's really going to come down to where are the dollars. And the dollars come from eyeballs. So if people, if the overwhelming majority of people are watching combat jiu-jitsu and then the money flows to that, then yes, I think it would help the sport. But I truthfully think it's a niche of the niche. I don't think, I think jiu-jitsu itself is a pretty limited reach of people. And I think combat jiu-jitsu is even smaller within that. I think if Gordon Ryan had some express, like, I'm going to do combat jiu-jitsu and like, you know, he, and honestly, well, I say the superstars of the sport, but really it's him and like the people surrounding him, I suppose, at this point. If they were pioneering combat jiu-jitsu as the way forward, then I would say maybe, but it's not. What I think the way forward is, is more super fight type events. I think higher paying matches in general, base pay for people to show up and compete. I don't, I don't know. I don't, the gi is going to need some work. The rule sets are, are going to need some work. But it's all going to come down to money. And I don't think the money is going to come from combat jiu-jitsu. So would I train combat jiu-jitsu? Honestly, no. There's no incentive. There's not a bunch of money being offered up. Like if someone said, hey, I'll give you 20 or 10 grand to fight in combat jiu-jitsu against this guy who is similarly skilled to you in a month, two months I would probably, I would seriously consider it, to be honest, because that's like a good amount of money, but but it's not. Like, no one, no one's offering that kind of money. Even for, like, MMA fights, that's, that's not what you're going to make on your first few fights. So then it comes down to risk and reward, and chances are you're going to take some damage, especially in an MMA fight, but probably you should expect to take damage in a combat jiu-jitsu fight just because if you could get hit expect to get hit that's going to happen so no no i wouldn't train combat jiu-jitsu no i don't think it's the way forward i think if you want to transition to mma i guess you could do it i guess you could convince your training partners to do it if it's something your gym does sure go to that class but not many people do it there's not a lot of money in it i don't think it's the way forward i think i don't like getting hit in the head and if you want to do mma do real mma but if you get bored of your regular jiu-jitsu and every once in a while you want to convince some nice training partners to do some slap boxing, some jiu-jitsu, some patty cake, do it. Have fun. It's good for your training. But that's my thoughts on combat jiu-jitsu. Leave me more comments down below to support the channel further. Peace.